I really liked playing the big sister role. Um, I felt like there were there were some hard times, but I was able to you know set a good example for her. And being so close in age, we had a lot in common when we were younger. We both really liked art. We were both in um, a lot of art classes together, like outside of school and in school. So we were able to draw things together, or like critique each other, kind of. Yeah, their relationship over the years has been up and down and loving and typical fighting sisters. When, when Ella was diagnosed, that changed everything. I started having pain in my like leg and thigh right here. And then that started getting progressively worse. And then I started getting migraines that got worse and worse. It was, it was kind of a weird time because I didn't really understand like the magnitude of the situation and how it would affect us in the long term. We didn't use the word cancer for a while. I couldn't even come my, bring myself to, to say the word for probably a month. Because it came back inconclusive, she had to get treated for both Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which meant um, you know, probably one and a half times the amount of chemo you know, than, than a normal patient. I had my first chemo round which is five days of chemo in the hospital. I had the first round in Houston. And then I finally got to come home after two weeks. I was, in, well, three weeks in the hospital. And I was like so incredibly homesick, even though I had my parents, I was so homesick. And then a couple days after I came home from Houston was my birthday. Her birthday was July 17th, and she had a full head of hair. And by the 19th, her hair started falling out the morning after her birthday. And that was really hard. I remember I took a shower and I was like trying to wash my hair or something. And it like all just started balling up and it was really bad and my mom had to cut it all off. She knew she would lose her hair. We knew she would lose her hair. She didn't fully understand how it would impact her. Whenever my hair started falling out, that was really sad and hard. Especially because whenever I first found out about the cancer, that's what I was most upset about was my hair. I think those of us that work in this field take it for granted as well what these children and their families are going through every day. I think we see something as a routine visit or they're here for chemotherapy and they've been doing it for a while, but when you stop and think about it, it's amazing to me what these children and their families are facing every day. There was always just a cloud of stress basically around our house, even though it's not during the chemo week. And on a daily basis, seemed like a team of doctors would come into our, our room there in Houston and give us bad news. When she looked me in the eye at one point and said, Mom, am I going to die? And that's when I knew right then and there, absolutely not, you're not going to. Whatever this is, we're going to fight it. The child life specialist that was on my oncology floor came to my room and she told me about Make-A-Wish and I didn't know what it was or anything about it and she started telling me what they could do for me. I think when a lot of people and patients and families hear about it the first time, they don't think it's real because nobody's gonna grant me a wish. Like maybe if I ask for a Lego set or something, they'll bring it. I had heard of Make-A-Wish, but certainly didn't know much about it. And when I came to realize this is about any sort of wish, you want, I was blown away. So whenever the wish granters first came to my house, I was super excited. I remember I was still in treatment, so that was a pretty uplifting day for me. She was so grateful and so appreciative, and her answers were just so thoughtful for, for everybody who had walked the journey with her, and you could just see that gratefulness in, in her eyes, and she, she was just so sweet. The beautiful thing was when Paige and Megan came over and, and met Ella initially, they didn't even talk about her cancer. They didn't treat her like she was bald and weak and sick. We had this conversation for, you know, they stayed here probably two hours just loving on her. I remember they brought me like paint because they knew that I liked to paint and they just talked to me about what my interests and things like that. Once she met Megan and Paige, it was a game changer. I chose Paris because since everyone was affected by my cancer, that everyone should be able to benefit from the Make-A-Wish. It didn't make her look forward to chemo, it just made her, looking for, made her look forward to getting it done. We've never been to Europe as a family, and, and that was 
that was her goal and treatment was going to get her there. For the patients who get to have their wish while they're on treatment, it's, it's an amazing thing because, you know, think about if you've ever taken a trip or something you were excited about, they talk about it constantly at the clinic, they say, oh, guess where we're going? It's almost like a, just a period of complete rejuvenation. Kids are more likely to go to the doctor to be seen, and then the more office visits they make, the more um, their prognosis improves. And, I, and I, we see that, you can see that in the kids, because a lot of them too, you know, before you go, you need your medical clearance, and so they've got to be ready. I'm just really grateful to have been able to have the majority of my treatment at Cook's because it's a very like nice and friendly hospital and for Dr. Heim, Dr. Heim was a really good doctor. He was always like making me laugh and making jokes and being positive about everything and that was super helpful. Oh, Cook Children's Hospital was, it was our home for, for five months and they made it feel like a home, not a hospital. And I remember having a conversation with, with Abby Storms at Make-A-Wish, and I said, I said to Abby, you know, I, I, I hope you don't mind this question, but what's the catch? Because we have a lot of medical bills, and we just really can't afford a trip like this. You know, I, I need to fully, she goes, there is no catch. And I just broke down, and I said, wow, okay, I, I get it now, I get it. I feel like the trip really brought us together because it was it was a really nice time to you know be with ourselves and we're all able to really bond because you know we're in a totally different place we're all able to experience all these new things together so I feel like it was a really good bonding experience because of that. About Paris my favorite things are probably going to see the Eiffel Tower and um, seeing different things like the Palace of Versailles and the Louvre was super fun and being able to spend time with family there. To essentially leave your treatment and all the memories in one place and say, I'm gonna pick up, and when I set foot in Paris, nobody knows that I had cancer, nobody knows that I got chemo, but everybody's gonna see that I am here to enjoy every minute of this incredible gift that I've been given, but also not that just I was given, but that I earned. And so I could just see her head held high, strutting down the Champs-Élysées, like she was the princess, so good for her. We're at a point now where we feel like we can exhale, and that trip came at a, a really important time for us to be able to celebrate what we have been through and, and to be able to breathe and enjoy um, you know, a new culture as a family. Well, now I'm doing really good. I've now been in remission for about almost two years, like coming very close because I believe my Remission anniversary is next month. Make-A-Wish is here for, uh, to, to grant wishes for critically ill children, which means um, children battling. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to make it. If I could say one thing beyond thank you to Make-A-Wish, it's without question thank you to all, any and all donors who make these wishes possible for Ella and all the other children out there. The day that I found out about Make-A-Wish, I was having a really hard time. And so it really does make your time in treatment a lot better because of like the hope that it provides and, and the sense of love that it gives you.